Let's get more now on the tougher restrictions coming into force for anyone entering Great Britain. Arrivals will be expecting to take a COVID test up to 72 hours before leaving any country that they're currently in. It's hoped that the new regulations due to start next week will stop the spread of new variants of the virus. Well, you still have to isolate for 10 days when you return to the UK. We can speak now to the Chief Executive of Ryanair, Michael O'Leary. Uh, presumably you welcome this, Mr O'Leary. No, we don't. Uh, we think it's another shambolic measure from Grant Shapps and the Boris Johnson government. I mean, the reality is that this new uh, pre-arrival test will mean that the airlines, uh, including Ryanair, EasyJet, BA and others, will essentially ground almost all of their flights for the foreseeable future. Uh, there's no way we can operate a schedule or offer people flights when, in reality, people will only be able to make bookings four days prior to departure. So. In essence, you're going to cut off the UK, uh, certainly for the rest of January, February. And the other problem we have with this morning's announcement is there's no end date. Boris Johnson has been telling the nation that all the high risk groups will be vaccinated by the middle of February. And then, but we don't understand why these, this uh, restriction on arrival testing uh, isn't, isn't also brought into line with that end of February date. If you've vaccinated all the high risk people, then we should be allowing uh, free movement again. Well, obviously, the government has said that's an aim to get everyone vaccinated in the in the four highest categories, not in all sure. of the highest categories by mid-February. It's, it's not clear whether that's going to be achieved. But just in terms of overall transportation, doesn't this allow some confidence, at least, for people travelling? Obviously, because we're in lockdown, people are not supposed to be travelling internationally unless there's a real, you know, sort of emergency reason. But, but that's the point. Like, what this does is it destroys all confidence in bookings. Nobody, even the people who have to make uh, kind of essential travel, you know, national uh, NHS staff traveling to and from or home or back, you know, the people who treated Boris Johnson when he was in hospital was a Portuguese nurse. They can't make bookings now because they will have no certainty whether they can travel or not because they, it'll be subject to them having a negative test four days prior to departure. Therefore, you're going to collapse forward bookings for the airlines and the ferry companies. And if we have no forward bookings, we have to cancel the flights. But can you, no why flights. can't people make bookings subject to getting a negative test? Because you leave the airlines then with, 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 the, with the risk that, well, they'll all cancel four days or within a day or two days of departure. We then have to run flights that will have, I don't know, maybe five or 10 percent of the seats sold. We lose so much money. It makes it the only way we can survive this is to not operate the flights at all. But, you but, will. This measure will destroy any confidence in forward bookings for air travel and for ferries, and it will essentially close off the UK. How are other countries coping? Because countries in, in East Asia, for example, are operating in a much stricter form, if anything. They're insisting on tests on arrival with, with you know, lots of quarantine and testing once you're in the country. And this has been going on for some time. They're still having uh, levels of transportation in and out. But they are, but they have much lower rates of COVID. I mean, they've managed the COVID outbreak much more successfully than the Johnson government has managed here in the UK. And you want to kind of a really examine how ridiculous this measure is. You know, we now have to arrive, if you're arriving in the UK with a, uh, a by, by plane or by ferry, you have to have a negative COVID test, but you can drive across the border between the south of Ireland and Northern Ireland without any testing at all. I mean, the big problem here well, the logic for most, of that is to most e extend testing. is that the new variant emerged in the UK. It didn't emerge from some Asian country or somewhere else. It emerged in the UK. Well, it came in Kent. We don't know whether it was brought into Kent, do we, or whether it, it, it developed here in the UK. We just don't know. And yeah, the point is true. that there Look, could be a whole lot of other mutations out there that are coming into the country if we don't yeah. seal our borders more effectively. You can't seal your borders in countries of, of Europe where you have you know, free movement of people. There's still free movement of people between the Republic of Ireland and the North of Ireland across the border. The real solution well, to this is back, the real solution. Well, let me get it. The real solution to this is vaccination, not artificial travel restrictions. Roll out the vaccination, as Johnson has uh, said, will be delivered. You will have all of the high risk groups, and that is the over 75s, the nursing homes, and the uh, NHS staff by the middle of February. And thereafter, the government should be honest and say there will be no restrictions after that once we achieve that date. Now, whether it's the middle of February or the end of February, we don't care. But with people who need to make bookings for March need to know whether there's going to be any flights or not. There certainly won't be flights in February. They need to know with some certainty whether there'll be flights in March. And the Johnson government needs to tell us that.
Well, what about all the other at-risk groups that are, will go definitely beyond uh, mid-February? Because until what you've, you've done at all those groups, look, the high, uh, the 95% of the deaths arising from COVID-19 arise in uh, the age groups that are over 75. Once you've vaccinated those people, are you then going to continue to lock up the children, the teenagers, the 20-year-olds? Yes, who may get COVID, but they're largely asymptomatic and they have a tiny risk of fatalities. That might be true, but they still can get very ill. The they can they can transmit it to other parts of the population. And isn't the point but here they, that we've but, seen... But you have vaccinated the at-risk group parts of the population. If you vaccinate the at-risk group for the population, what are you worried about? Well, my son was uh, very ill with COVID. He had no underlying problems. Thankfully, he's better. He's a healthy teenager. Oh, and so and other other families have but seen long COVID and therefore to be cavalier, to be cavalier the still the about this virus is, is really uh, not sensible, is it? We've seen the government racing now to get this vaccine out, having to change the whole protocols just to protect the population against this new strain. But once the vaccine is rolled out, if the government has uh, vaccinated 14 million people by the middle of February, and that's the government's own uh, uh, deadline, that eliminates the risk of, what, 95, if not close to 100% of any fatalities arising from COVID. Are you then going to continue to lock up the teenagers, close the schools and everything else? Well, I think the, the, no that's a much, that's a mu much it's bigger... It's not for the BBC to argue what the government should do. If once you've vaccinated all the high-risk groups, remove the travel restrictions. They're not necessary. We're locking people up here to save lives and protect the NHS. Well, if vaccinations have saved lives and protected the NHS by the middle of February, then you've got to remove these restrictions. Well, obviously, it's a very complex picture. The BBC is not arguing anything. I'm not arguing anything. I'm just putting to you the counter arguments because obviously everyone knows that we need... We Once we... you have vaccinated the high-risk groups, what is the justification for further lockdowns of hospitality, of tourism? How many more hundreds of thousands of jobs need to be destroyed by this government's mismanagement? Well, again, there are many, many questions in terms of the whole management of this pandemic in this country. And the answer to that is vaccinations. Boris Johnson has told us he will have vaccinated the 14 million high-risk categories by the middle of February. What we need Grant Shapps to do today is confirm then that this ridiculous pre-arrival testing will then be removed by the middle of February because the effect of the pre-arrival testing is you're going to have no flights and no ferry access to the UK. OK, we will have to leave it there, but obviously still a lot of questions and uh, we appreciate your time, Michael O'Leary. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.